My name is Chloe Mead, and I did my research paper on the bacteria Clostridium botulinum. So, Clostridium botulinum is a single-celled spore forming, as you can tell by the shape of this, uh, gram-positive bacteria. Um, it is bacillus in shape and highly pathogenic. It is also labeled as a firmicute, and it's um, an obligate anaerobe, which means it does not need oxygen, and therefore it ferments sugar. It's found in mainly in soil, so soil bacteria, sediments, um, things like sea mud, um, animal manure is a big one too. Um, it's also labeled as a oops, saprophyte, which means that it um, <clears throat> thrives and lives off of dead and decaying matter, which is important for later, but um, yeah, kind of gross. <laughs> This is a cool picture though. So the disease that you contract from this bacteria is called botulism. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of it. Um, it's pretty dangerous. Uh, it comes from this thing called the botulinum neurotoxin that the bacteria produces. Um, so this is uh, contracted via incorrectly canned food and that just means you know at the wrong temperature and um basically the wrong temperature and just not properly um sealed um there's also a thing called wound botulism which is just botulism you contract from having an open wound getting dirt in it whatever um if that if clostridium botulinum gets its way in there you go um, there's also a thing called infant botulism, which, um, is terrifying, but infants can contract botulism via, um, the dirt as well. Also, um, honey is a big, a big one. Um, but this is because infants, uh, specifically within their first year of age, they are, uh, their immune system is not as strong, so it can be particularly dangerous to get botulism as an infant. Um, first symptoms are just, you know, the usual when you have a bacterial infection. It's going to be nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and then comes the constipation and muscle weakness, and that is because of the mechanism that this neurotoxin takes on. So here we can see... Um, <clears throat> you know, blurred vision, your slurred speech, and this is because it does attack at the muscular, cellular muscle level. Um, hardest hit will be your respiratory system just because of the mechanism of action. So what um, this neurotoxin does is it cleaves off um, this thing called a snare protein, which is used to allow acetylcholine release from your cells in order to cause um, muscle contraction. So if this, you know, channel or opening is ruined or degraded somehow, acetylcholine cannot be released and you cannot contract your muscles and that's why it is so dangerous and you get a lot of, you know, um, blurry vision, drooping eyelids, a lot of this, you know, constipation, that's why that comes later, because your muscles have just kind of paralyzed, and um, this is why it kills you. Your respiratory system, obviously, if you can't contract that, you can't breathe, you're gonna die. So yes, it is pretty, um, pretty serious of a disease. So the host's um, there are several hosts, mainly animals, obviously humans. Um, this diagram here is super helpful since there are several groups and several um, toxinotypes um, that can occur from this bacteria. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, it's this The genes for this toxin um, come from plasmids, and there's a lot of research on the plasmids and how they're changing and transferring and it's um, 
yeah, plasmids. Anyways, um, fish and pigs can carry it healthily. Also, birds was a big one. Um, but yes, animal botulism usually comes from these um, type C and D. Humans is going to be A and B and rarely F. Um, but usually humans will be getting it from, you know, the soil or food that they've improperly canned. Animals will get it, you know, from more rural reasons, you know, being outside the soil. Um, and I actually have this picture of a cow here, these cows here, because um, it reminds me of a time when I was attending UC Davis. I was at a lab at a dairy farm, and they had told us a story about um, an outbreak years ago in which a bunch of cows had contracted botulism and they eat like this they get a big you know bunch of foodstuffs laid out in front of them and this foodstuffs there's a huge barn and there's just massive piles of different things that they eat you know from like almond husks and corn and whatever and they kind of just combine a bunch of it at, a, at one point in the day and mulch it together and then pour it out here for them and the person who was feeding that day had found a dead cat in one of the piles and thought, you know what, I'm just going to throw it in with the food and mulch it up together, whatever, it's no big deal. But since it was a dead cat and botulism or Clostridium botulinum prefers, you know, dead decaying matter, it had been infested and all of the cows ended up contracting botulism and dying. And needless to say, it was not a good year for that dairy. Yikes. Um, but yes, so yeah, lives in soils, can be transmitted to animals and humans. Um, it's also more common in colder climates just because, and rural cold, cold climates, because uh, people who live there tend to, you know, they do farming and then they t tend to, you know, preserve their own food and things can go wrong if you're not doing it properly. So, you know, you have that anaerobic environment sealed, but, uh, you know, something happens, not the right temperature, botulism or clostridium botulinum can thrive and it also has something to feed on if you're putting food in those cans so and then again babies with the honey because honey can also carry the bacteria so don't feed your babies honey <laughs> um so this is just a slide with some maps here um i can't remember what year this is this is this doesn't look good but i want to say late 2010s um, so this is a foodborne botulism case. There's only 19 of them, but mainly in California, which also here you can see California was big. I don't know if it's just because it's a big state, but um, Alaska as well. This one's for infant botulism. There was 141 cases this year. So that's kind of how it's spread out. So when it comes to avoiding botulism, as I've said before, if you're canning or storing your food in jars, you really want to properly do that at the correct temperatures so that you can kill off any bacteria. Um, moisture levels also matter. And this even goes for, you know, if you're just airtight sealing, you know, fish or any meats, you really want to make sure that Especially meats, you really want to make sure that um, it's done correctly. You want to keep your wounds clean, obviously. Um, you don't want to feed your infants honey. You want to limit their, limit their exposure to dirt as well, um, especially in the mouth. You know, obviously, you want your kids to have a good immune system and, you know, be exposed to things, but just be wary that is a risk. And when it comes to treatment, um, I did read about gastrointestinal decontamination. Obviously, you're going to have the spores within you, and you're just going to want to clear that out. Um, but most commonly known is the antitoxin, and this antitoxin just neutralizes any form of the toxin that hasn't already bound or done its job. So, you know, you're still going to have signs and symptoms for the, the toxin that did um, end up, you know, cleaving that protein or doing that. So it's just going to kind of neutralize whatever's left floating around there. But yes, it is a very scary disease to contract. And here are my references. And yeah, I had a fun time reading about this. I read about it in college. 
or um, in David uh, Davis, and I thought it was really interesting. I also find it super interesting that people, um, some people don't realize that um, Botox is uh, the toxin A. Um, I feel like that's something really important to notice. It's just a localized um, injection of the toxin that kind of has the same mechanism, stops your muscle from contracting in your face so that you can, you know, not cause any further wrinkle damage. So yeah, you hopefully that doesn't get into your main bloodstream ever. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for a great semester and also I wanted to thank you for doing live lectures up until you did because that saved me. Alrighty. Bye.